Hi, and welcome to our second road trip through Kent, taking in more picturesque villages and historic towns. Let's see if you can spot the squirrel. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future travels. We're in the southeast corner of the UK, and as I said, we're in the county of Kent. Our road trip is roughly 40 miles or 65 kilometers, and we're stopping off at seven locations. Should you want to cycle this route, I'll pop up a National Rail logo, and there's a train station within one mile. I'll also pop up the route so you can keep track of where we are as we go along. So let's take a look at our first stop, Hollingbourne, just off Junction 8 of the M20 motorway. Now Hollingbourne is a village of two halves, and has a mainline railway station in the middle. Like so many locations on this route, the speed limit through the village is 30 miles an hour, which is just under 50 kilometers per hour. As you enter from the south, you're gonna notice the village pillory. Don't worry, I don't think they use them anymore. So we park up to explore the village, and a word of warning parking is a little limited here. and Hollingbourne is as pretty as a postcard, with its village shop and its traditional pub. The village shop is a great place to pick up your provisions for the rest of your road trip. As I said, Hollingbourne is a village of two halves, and we jump in the car and head up to Upper Street, where you'll find at the bottom of the hill Hollingbourne Manor, the 16th century seat of the Culpepper family. The top of Upper Street intersects with the Pilgrim's Way, that ancient route from Winchester to the shrine of Thomas a Becket in Canterbury Cathedral. We now hit the road again and drop back down through Hollingbourne to pick up the A20 towards our next destination. After a short hop along the A20, it's not long before we're turning off towards Lenham. And here's our route from Hollingbourne to Lenham. Once again, Lenham has a mainline railway station. I like Lenham, and one of the reasons is its little free short-term car park in the old market square. There's actually a longer-term car park just a few hundred metres away. I believe you can park here for up to two hours, which is long enough to stop at a cafe, have a bite to eat, or pick up some supplies for your road trip. It's also a possible stopover location for you if you want to make this more than a one-day trip. We found it a really interesting little place to have a wander around. What also caught our eye was this strange little building on the edge of town. Originally built in the mid 18th century as the mortuary to the workhouse. Also a central part of the village is St Mary's Church and of course if you know Janice then we've got to go and explore the graveyard. Anyway, time to head on and back onto the A20 and my James Bond link. If anyone's read Ian Fleming's Moonraker, the only Bond novel to be set entirely in the UK, this is the stretch of road where James Bond, in his famous Bentley, 
has a race with an Alfa Romeo. I don't suspect this road has changed much since then. So this is the route from Lenham to our next destination of Charing. And again there is a mainline railway station nearby. Firstly, is this Charing or Charing? I pronounce it Charing as in Charing Cross, but if you know for sure then leave us a comment. Anyway, back to the route. We pull off the A20 or the old Maidstone Road and head up the high street. Charing is a pretty place that touches the Pilgrim's Way at the north end of the village and also worth checking out is the old Archbishop's Palace or the remains of the old Archbishop's Palace. In history many famous people have stopped here including Henry VIII. And what was that? Here we have the Church of St Peter and St Paul's the local parish church. Also close by is the memorial to Frederick Coppings, who was born in the village and won a Victoria Cross for his actions near Amiens in the First World War. Charing also has a wonderful village green with tables and chairs, so if you fancy a picnic, this could be your spot. But for those of us on the move, it's time to hit the road again. We are now heading north along the A252 to our next destination. And again we have another village that has provided free parking. So this is our route from Charing to Chillum, and for those cycling, yes we have just climbed the North Downs. It's just a short stroll, granted uphill from the free car park to the centre of Chillum village. This beautiful little village looks like it's just out of the movies. And to be honest, it has been in the movies, from Jane Austen's Emma, to Agatha Christie's Miss Marple, and Hercule Poirot, to name just but a few. Also within the village is Chillum Castle. What you see before you is the Jacobean building, but there's also a Norman keep, but its history dates much earlier than that. A perfect place for a spot of lunch, or possibly a stroll around taken in St Mary's Church. We're on the road again but let's take one final look around Chillum before we head on.
So this is our route from Chillum to our next destination of Faversham, which also has a mainline railway station. Now, to be honest, I'm only going to give you the briefest of views of Faversham. Hopefully you caught our earlier video, but if not, I'll pop up a link in the corner so you can catch that later. Here's a little look at what you'll see. It's also worth adding, if you're thinking of stopping over, then this would make an ideal location too. And now we're heading on to the tiny hamlet of Orr, or more precisely, Orr Marshes. So this is us arriving at all, but we're actually going to press on through up Church Road towards All Marshes Nature Reserve. This area is very popular with bird watchers and ramblers who are taken in the Saxon Shore Way. I've included this on the route because it's another side to Kent and it's so peaceful and it's just nice to take a leg stretch at times. Also on the other side of the creek is the Shipwright's Arms, which is a wonderful little pub, if you have the chance. Now time to head on to our final destination, before returning to Hollingborn. You have to admit, some of these road sections are pretty beautiful. And now we arrive at our final destination of Noonham. I've included Noonan because it's a pretty little place with a country pub. It's also got another historic church, St Peter and St Paul's.
we now cut across country to return to Hollingbourne. I hope you like what we put together here and don't forget to subscribe. I'll pop up a link to our first Kentish road trip so you can check that out if you want. Thanks so much for watching.